I think IC61508 has been a success, in particular in the way that we can now communicate functional safety matters with a much wider audience and have a much more objective debate about matters. Of particular importance has been the uptake of the concept of the overall safety life cycle. And I think most people now appreciate that to achieve functional safety it is necessary to achieve all relevant phases and meet all relevant requirements for each phase of the overall safety life cycle. To comply with the safety life cycle, second, with the safety management plan, third, with the safety integrity level. We have to always to, to comply with the safety integrity level for each SIF. And then, last but not least, the verification and validation. I think the cell concept has really conquered uh, the world. Uh, I've seen it from Canada to Argentina, from Europe to uh, Australia. Everybody talks about SIL. They might not know exactly yet how to implement it, but everybody is talking about it. To make sure the customer defines his risk correctly, he has to invite the right competencies in his plant. These are people which are process engineers, operation or maintenance. They have to sit together and talk what can go wrong, how often it can go wrong, and what the consequences would be. The risk of identification should be carried out at the beginning of the project, since it's very, very easy to identify the major hazard, the major risk of your equipment under control, and that identification will permit you to identify the major safety requirement of your safety instrumented system. As we said previously, tolerable risk depends on the society and on the activities. Some major incidents show that regulations may be not sufficient. And uh, sometimes the regulations are done after a major incident such as Seveso. We must keep in mind that uh, legal requirements must be seen as a minimum and not a, as a maximum. In fact, the best way of improvement for the safety is to do a risk analysis since the beginning of the project and not at the end of the project. What the standard asks is always to describe how this hazard has been identified, how this hazard has been managed during the life cycle. The advantages of the application of 6158 is, uh, in my opinion, only one that's very important, means to achieve safety. Because the standard actually is a performance-based standard. That's revolutionary. While well, studies have proved in the past by investigating some incident that many plants were over-engineered or actually underprotected, following the safety standard, doing the proper functional safety management, doing proper risk assessment, and using competent people have proved that you can actually save time and money and increase your uptime of your process availability. As an example, there is an LNG plant in the Middle East which was redesigned where they have deleted 96 critical transmitters in their plant using the IEC 61508 and IEC 61511 as basis of their engineering. It is clear that systems are not going to get less complex, they are going to get more complex. And it is absolutely essential that if businesses want to make maximum use of this kind of technology and achieve their business targets and also meet essential safety targets, they have to have competence at both organisational and personal levels as I indicated several times before. One issue related to the conformance to 61508 and 11 standards is related to the certification. We have all in this industry to clarify one point. The standards don't require a certification, but all the components, subsystems, devices related to safety instrumented systems are certified. So in my opinion, we do need a list of certifying bodies 
like for latex directives, and a complete list, item by item, of certification tests to be carried out by every certifying body. Otherwise, we have SEAL 2 or SEAL 3 certification of, of similar components, but certified bodies are not the same. First and second, certification tests are not the same. So the components are not comparable. I think companies and people sometimes try to make safety too complicated. They should keep in mind that the first rule of safety is to keep it simple. Vous savez la vraie question. But the real question is not that of which sanctions are available to judges, but rather the question of what the industrialist can infer from the sanctions he knows to exist, so as to improve and prevent, since this is really the only thing that matters.